Nowadays, USB, or Universal Serial Bus, is a widely accepted standard for peripheral and device connection. But that wasn't always the case. Let's talk about the history of USB. Some of the first standards for connecting devices to computers were serial and parallel ports. Let's start with parallel. Now, this connection standard was named such because multiple bits of data could be sent at once in parallel. The most common connection for the standard was the printer port, which was used from the 1970s all the way to the early 2000s even. This connector is rather large and bulky, and cables for it were not the most portable things in the world. Now, regular parallel ports support transfer speeds up to 150 kilobits per second, while more modern revisions, including the Enhanced Parallel Port, EPP, which was created in the late 90s, could go up to 2 megabits per second. But all of these are still nothing compared to today's standards. There was also the Serial Port. Now, this connection transferred one bit at a time in Serial. Now, to be clear, a lot of standards and protocols today technically fit that definition. I mean, USB is universal serial bus. But when people say a serial connection, they are typically referring to the RS-232 standard, or Recommended Standard 232, which was first defined in May of 1960. That's pretty old. Serial was also known as the COM port on many IBM-compatible PCs. Serial connections are actually still used today in many server and industrial applications especially. Uh, for example, most high-end network switches require the connection to configure them. Now, the most common serial connector is the 9-pin D-type connector, or DE9 connector. And the highest speed supported by Windows for a serial connection is 128 kilobits per second. And the highest speed defined at all by the standard is 460.8 kilobits per second. Again, very slow by today's standards. Now, another standard for peripheral connection was PS2, which you may be a little more familiar with. Now, PS2 was a form of serial more specifically designed for keyboards and mice that operated at about 7 to 12 kilobits per second. In fact, many modern motherboards still have PS2 ports, especially server and lower end consumer boards for increased compatibility with legacy devices. And even most laptops connect their keyboards through PS2. In the 1990s, Apple developed Firewire, or IEEE 1394. This was a serial bus standard, so still, you know, serial, but no, no longer RS-232. It had several advantages over serial, including the ability to connect up to 63 devices using either daisy chaining or a tree topology. It also didn't require a dedicated host device, allowing for easier peer-to-peer -peer connection, and supported hot swapping natively, meaning that you didn't need to shut down or restart the computer every time you wanted to plug in or unplug a device. Now, technically, many of the later serial devices could be hot swapped without any issues, but it was not officially supported. Now, there were two main connectors for Firewire, the six pin and the smaller four pin. Now, common versions included Firewire 400, which was rated at 400 megabits per second, and Firewire 800, which was capable of, you guessed it, 786 megabits per second. Now, it's important to note, however, that the different versions were not intercompatible, which is one of the reasons that led to the downfall of Firewire. The other main reason was the high cost and the fact that it was Apple. So like it was a standard, but it was you know, Apple. Now, finally, we have reached the Universal Serial Bus, or USB. USB was developed around the same time as Firewire, but obviously ended up dominating. Now, the goal of USB was to unify these similar, but not quite the same connectors, hence the name. Now, unlike Firewire, USB does need a dedicated host device, which led to USB A and USB B being completely separate connectors to try to help differentiate devices. Now, USB also differentiates from Firewire in that it can handle up to 127 devices as opposed to a mere 63. No, but like in all seriousness though, Either one is probably more than plenty for you. If you're saturating that device limit, you have a problem. Common connectors for USB include the Type A, the ever famous rectangle that you can never plug in right the first time. Mini A, which really isn't used anymore. Mint Type B, which is most commonly found on larger devices like printers. 
mini B, the smaller form of B, which can still be found on things like calculators, and micro B, the slightly more compact replacement to mini B, which is one of the worst connectors ever created. Now, later with USB 3, we get different versions of these connectors, but we'll talk about that later. So USB 1.0 debuted in 1995 at 12 megabits per second, a good improvement already over serial and parallel. USB 1.1 came shortly after, which could still do 12 megabits per second, but also 1.5 megabits per second for smaller, more efficient device operation. USB 2.0 came in 2000 at a whopping 480 megabits per second. USB devices using any of these standards were fully forwards and backwards compatible, and they'll just operate at the speed of the lowest link in the chain. So plugging in a 1.1 device into a 2.0 port will work just fine just at 1.1 speeds and vice versa. USB 2.0 also added official support for power delivery, the first mini and later micro connectors, and USB OTG or on the go. Now OTG allowed for devices that were usually the B device and had B connectors, but had extra horsepower and capabilities to act as host devices in certain situations. This was most useful for smartphones, which would be the B device when connected to a computer, but could be the A device for external storage, for example. This was also the first time we saw USB flash drives, which changed the game for portable storage, as it was a small, plug and play, hot swappable, and rewritable device without needing to reburn the whole thing. <coughs> Discs. USB 3.0 came in 2008, upping the speeds even further from 480 megabits per second to 4.8 gigabits per second, a 10x upgrade. Now this was called USB Super Speed, and it was still forwards and backwards compatible with all existing devices, just like before, but it also had an extra set of pins to help facilitate the higher speeds when connected to compatible devices. Now the USB A connector was super easy. The pins could just sit at the back of the port, so if you plug it into a 2.0 port, it works the same, it just doesn't make contact. But for the Type B and Mini and Micro Bs, it was a little less elegant. USB 3.1 came in 2013, and USB 3.1 Gen 1 was basically just a rebrand of USB 3.0 to really emphasize the super speed part, I guess. USB 3.1 Gen 2 upped the speeds to 10 gigabits per second and was the introduction of USB Type-C, the best connector. USB-C brought a lot of improvements. It was a smaller connector, it was more durable, especially compared to micro B, it was reversible, so no more, oh, which way does it go? Oh no, it's the other way, oh, it was that way, none of that garbage. It had higher power delivery up to 85 watts, meaning it could charge laptops now even. Support for alternate modes, including DisplayPort, meaning that it can carry more than just a USB signal in a single cable, and it no longer requires a dedicated host, a first for USB. When connected to A or B, it'll just run at the other one, but when connected to another C device, it will usually give the user the option of choosing which mode to run. Now this is much better for modern devices where either one may need to take control at any given moment. Type-C is also the standard for Thunderbolt 3, but that's a whole nother discussion. Type-C is meant to expand on the universal vision and become the one connector to rule them all. I mean, it's small, durable, reversible, versatile, fast, with high power delivery, and can connect with virtually anything. From regular flash drives, charging cables, displays. Now, I've made it clear in the past, and I will continue to make it clear, that I'm a huge proponent of the USB-C All The Things movement. It really is the ultimate connector. So USB did accomplish its goal. It really is a universal standard. It's used today for mass storage devices, media transfer, HID, human interface devices like keyboards and, and mice. Audio streaming, even DFU device firmware upgrade can be done over USB. It is the universal standard befitting of its name. And if the type C connector gets adopted like I hope it does, it will truly be completely 100% universal. Everything will run off a single connection and it will be glorious. That's been the history of USB. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. Let me know what you think in the comments down below if you have any questions or anything like that. And let me know, how did the first episode of this PC Standards History series that I'm working on come out? Like, just let me know in the comments down below.
Also, don't forget to subscribe for more cool videos like this one. Follow me on Twitter at Solid State Tweet for the first updates on absolutely everything. And actually, my Twitter followers got to decide what this first PC Standards History video was going to be. So definitely follow me there. But in any case, I'll see you guys in the next one.